give me Isaiah 66. Let's show how Christ is coming back. Everybody, no, give me Isaiah 42, 13. Everybody thinks that Christ is coming back. Kumbaya, hugs and kisses. You know, bringing the tulips and the roses and everything going to be sweet. Let's see what the Bible says about how Christ is going to return. You got that? Bring it out. The book of Isaiah, chapter 42, verse 13. The Lord shall go forth. As a mighty man. God said that when Christ returns, he's going to go forth as a mighty man. Read. That's right. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. Like a man of war. Christ is going to come back in the midst of World War Three. That's right. All you got to do is turn on your news. The stage is being set. Right. Look it out. The Ukraine is doing what? Go bucking up against Russia. Why is that important? Because the Ukraine is a part of NATO or trying to be a part of NATO. Who leads NATO? This country, the Babylon the Great. Right. And the prophecy in the Bible is that what? The ten horns will hate the whore and devour her. Right. So the stage is being set. That's World War III is happening right before our eyes. And Christ is going to return in the midst and bring forth death and destruction if you don't repent. That's right. Read. He shall cry, yea, roar. God said he will cry, yea, roar. Come on. He shall prevail against his enemy. He shall do what? Prevail against his enemies. Who are the enemies of God? The up. enemies of God are the people who put his children in slavery. That's right. I want any parent out here to think upon your child being forcefully taken from you, being beaten, being raped, being murdered, being completely annihilated. What would you do if you got a chance to get restitution? That's right. What would you do? But guess what? God was the first parent. So you think he don't feel that same way about his children? Right. So all these other nations that did what? That touched his children? Oh, you got a sure judgment coming for you. Right. Go ahead and smile now while everything is cool because when Christ comes, it's going to be ugly. That's right. And guess what? For those of you Israelites who are you Blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians who choose to willfully go against God's commandments, you going right up in that judgment too. That's right. right. Read on. I have long time holding my peace. I said, I hold my peace. I waited. I saw my children go through chattel slavery. I saw my children go through colonialism. I saw my children go through Jim Crow. And I held my peace. I stayed patient. Read. I have been still and refrained myself. Now, will I cry like a traveling woman? The Bible says Christ will cry like a traveling woman when he comes back. Like a woman in, in labor. Christ is coming back with, with swift destruction and judgment. Read. Bring it out. I will destroy and devour at once. God said that Christ is going to come back and destroy and devour at once. Why are we playing games in these last days? Bring it out. Why are we walking up and down the street like everything is cool? Deep. Why are we not focusing on the importance of getting our lives right? right. Black man, it's time for you to stand up and lead your community. That's right. The only way you lead your community is by being a man according to the Bible. That's right. Keep me, God, give me first king. Show me what it is to be a man. We ain't got enough male figures in our lives. Black man, the way you be a man is by living the integrity of God's commandments. That's right. You do the right thing because God said so. If it's in this Bible, you do it. If it's not in the Bible, you don't do it. That's, That's how right. you be a man of the Lord. Read, Read what you got. First Kings 2 2. Let's show, the, let's show the people what it is to be a man. Because 70% of us were raised without our fathers. Right. And those 30% that had our fathers, they probably were raised without their fathers. That's right. So we have no semblance of what manhood is in our community. Read it out. find out today, though. Read. The book of 1 Kings, chapter 2, verse 2. Yeah. I go the way of all the earth. Read. Be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man. I said to Solomon, excuse me. David told Solomon to be strong and show yourself a man. Now, what did he instruct him to do to be a man? Read. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways, uh -huh. to keep his statutes uh -huh. and his commandments. God said the way you become a man is to do what? Walk in his ways, keep his statutes, and keep his commandments. That's right. You have to repent. You have to confess your faults before the Lord and come back and humble down and keep God's commandments. My young brothers over here, do y'all know that y'all are Israel according to the Bible? That's what's wrong with our community. My brothers, we got to have time for the word of God. It's the last days. We ain't got nothing to play with. Right. The world is coming to an end. That's and if right. you get found not keeping God's commandments, death and destruction for you. That's, That's right. right. Matthew 4, 17. Let's show what we out here for. Because I don't want the message to get misconstrued. 
We're not out here just to holler and yell and condemn our people. We are here to show them the sense of urgency that we have to move under. All right? We are here to show our people that it's a different way to live righteously according to the Bible. That's right. And you still got time to repent and change your life. You can get off the drugs, black man. You can pull your pants up, black man. Sisters, you can get off the stripper pole, black woman. Yes, you can do it. Right, right. Yes, you can get off of these terrible things that we do in our community. Right. And you can do what? Transform yourself to a king and a princess according to the word of God. That's right. Read what you got. The book of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's the message we are here teaching. We are teaching our people to repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The world is coming to an end, all right? We got to repent in these last days. Right. Keep God's laws, statutes, and commandments, right. all right? We got to understand that what? It's our job to do that so we can get the kingdom. Give me Matthew 19. Why is it so important for us to keep the, keep the commandments? Why is it so important? Because we've been taught that, oh, as long as we believe in God and say I love him and, and sow my tithe, I'm a good man. I'll, I'll get to heaven. No. Christ gave us specific instructions on how you get the kingdom of heaven. Read what you got. Look at Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. Right. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? So a man came to Christ. He asked him, what good thing should I do that I may get eternal life? That's the golden question we all should be asking. Right. What is it that I got to do so I can get eternal life? Let's see what Christ's response was. Come on. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. That is God. But if thou wilt enter into life. But if you want to enter into life, if you want to receive eternal life, read. Keep the commandments. We got to keep God's commandments. That's what Christ said. Christ said to keep his commandments. Let me show you some examples of commandments. One commandment for a brother that you can start doing right now. Give me beer. One commandment for a brother that you can start doing right now. Then we're going to show one for the sisters that you can do right now. It's an easy thing that we can do. We can just slowly start repenting and keeping God's commandments, changing our ways step by step. You got that? 19 to 27? Go ahead. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 27. Ye shall not round the corner of your heads, neither shall that more the corners of thy beard. So now, I, I'm, I'm seeing something in the spirit here. I see my brothers is, is intriguing my, my, my family here. What's wrong? Point to it. And I see that they say that white man is Christ. You know what happens when you get the white Christ doctrine? Exactly what we're talking about. Not keeping God's commandments. Let's show according to the Bible what Christ looked like and why it's important. You got that? Look at this. Give me Revelations 1. Bring it out. Family, I want y'all to understand. Y'all been taught that this was the white was Jesus Christ, right? Right? Now, is this substantiated in the Bible? Does Christ look like this according to the Bible? No. Okay, do you think the Bible describes what he looks like? Mm. I'm not sure. Bring it out. No, no, right? That's what we're talking about today. We're talking about the fact that our people don't know what they have to do according to God. All right? So now you got the brothers out here showing you what is the truth according to the Bible. Guess what? Christ's description actually is in the Bible. That's That's right. Right. We're about to find out right now. You ready? Come on. The book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. The Bible says this is the revealing. The revelation means to reveal something, okay? We're about to reveal the true Jesus Christ in Charlotte, North Carolina today. That's right. Read. Which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. Just the 14. Verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So I want to play basic game of compare and contrast. The Bible says that his head and his hairs were white like wool, okay? Now there's two important things to think of. One thing is color, and one thing is texture. Now out of these two, which one has white hair? Which one? This one, right? So that's strike one against him. All right? Out of, out of the second one, which one has woolly hair? What, what is woolly hair? Do you, do, my, young man, do you know what woolly hair is? Woolly. You don't speak English? Any of your kids speak English? My man, I can talk to you. Do you know what woolly hair is? What's woolly hair? Say it again. Fluffy, I like that, like an afro, right? A fluffy afro hair, right? Woolly hair, right? Now, which one of these has woolly hair? Which one of these has straight hair? Which one has woolly hair? The afro, right? So guess what? That's strike two. That's right. So he got one more strike and he out of there. Read on. As white as snow, mm -hmm. and his eyes were as a flame of fire, Read. and his feet. So, your feet, look at mama. Mama got her feet out, right? 
They said they looked down at Christ's feet. What did it say about his feet? And his feet like unto fine brass, huh? as if they burned in a furnace. So, are your feet the same color as the rest of your body? Pretty much for the most part, similar color, right? The top of your feet, right? So the Bible says that his feet was like fine brass. What color is brass? You know? The color is, say it again. Exactly. Brass is brown. So now watch this. It said his feet was like a fine brown as if what? As if they burned in a furnace. So now, the Bible says his feet look like they burned in a furnace. Anytime you burn something, what color does it become? Right, a darker brown, right? Or black, right? So now, according to the Bible, we said hair that was white, hair that was woolly, and feet like burned brass. So biblically speaking, which one of these is the true depiction of Christ? Right, give my sister a round of applause. That's right. This is the true depiction of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is a black man according to the Bible. That's right. And why is that so important? Because for far too long, us minorities, called so-called black and brown people, we've never had a positive image to look up to. That's right. Anytime we look up to a great image, we see white angels, we see white God, and we think less of ourselves. That's right. And then we begin to worship them. So my sister, what you should do today, because you learned that Jesus Christ is a black man, what you got on right now is a false idol. You should take that false idol off and you should throw it in the trash. That's right. Yes, give me Habakkuk 2 for the sister. Sister, you got to understand, God commanded us to not make graven images of other gods. That's right. If that white man does not fit this Bible, he's a false god. That's right. You are in the midst of idolatry right now. That's right. But you can show your love for Christ and your love for the Lord by repenting right now. That's right. And taking that garbage off and putting it where it belongs, right in the garbage. Come on, sister. It's on you to repent. Show forth your people an example of repentance, my sister. Let's read the book. Let's read the verse. Come on. The book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 18. What profit is the graven image? God said, what profit the graven image? We walk around wearing, we walk around wearing uh, crosses and, and Jesus pieces and all that. God said, what profit that graven image? What good is it going to do for you? You think it brings you some type of spiritual protection? No, the spiritual protection is found by applying what's written in this book. Right. Read. That the maker thereof has graven it, the molten image, and a teacher of love. What the what? And a teacher of love. When you walk around with a cross on your neck or a Jesus piece with a white man, you being taught lies. That's right. I, if they would lie about the identity of Christ, don't you think it was common sense they would lie about his message too? That's right. If they lied and he told you what he looked like, of course they would lie about what he taught. Christ was a refuge to the old. Give me Psalms 9 and 9. It's my last scripture. I'm looking at this scripture cover. Give me Psalms 9 and 9. Let me show you what Christ's message is truly about for those of us who've been confused. You got what I want? Psalms chapter 9, verse 9. You got it? We got to understand that we've been taught a false message according to Christ. And we're going to reveal the true message of God, the true message of Christ in these last days. You ready for me? Psalms 9, verse 9. Come on, brother. Read. The book of Psalms, chapter 9, verse 9. I want y'all to listen to the true message that Christ is about. Read. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed. God said he will be a refuge for the oppressed. Yes. Last time I checked, you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you are being oppressed in all four corners of the earth. Yes. God said that he will be a refuge to the oppressed. God stands on the side of the people who've been trodden down. Because we are the Israelites. We are his chosen people. And if we repent, the Lord will save us. Give me one more scripture. Jeremiah 30 verse 7. My brother. Go ahead. My brother. What's your nationality? Indian white. Oh, check it out. My Indian brother. I'm from the tribe of Gadget. Like you. Don't let me hang it, bro. Come on. My brother. My brother. Don't let me hang it. All right, now. According to the Bible, you were Israelite. Did you know that? Yeah, I know that. Oh, so okay. So if you knew that you was an Israelite, then what do you got to do? Because it's not just good to know. What you got to do? Believe in Christ. Okay, but what, is, what does believing mean, though? Because believe is an action word. We always say believe, believe, believe. What does that mean? You know what I mean? I'm in the outlaw. I read the Bible every day. Uh -huh. I don't think that's enough. You read the Bible every day? Well, let me Six show you something. Hours. Six hours? Hold that. Give me uh, Sirach 32, 24. Let me show you what it means to believe. Because a lot of our people say they believe in God, believe in the Bible. Okay? I'm going to show you one scripture. I got to let the next teacher come up in a minute. But let me show you this one scripture. Okay? Read it. He that believe The book of Sirach, chapter 32, verse 24. He that believeth in the Lord. So you say you believe in the Lord, believe in Christ. Many of our people say they believe in the Lord, believe in Christ. You got to understand that that's an action word. It said he that believeth in the Lord. Read Take it heed to the commandments. You gotta take heed to God's commandments, bro. You've never been taught that. 
But the Bible says if you believe in the Lord, you must take heed to the commandments of God. That's All right? right. And when we as a people take heed to God's commandments, Christ will come back and he will save us from our troubles. All right. But that we used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.